morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements or other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy. I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is nothing more than the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. We are here for you. We'll get your calls here a little earlier today. Calls have been backing up. We'll get your calls in our second segment, so try to call in early. So it's first come, first serve. So if you try call in early, we can get to as many calls as possible. Our number is 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team. Our number, uh, their number is 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. You can also head over to brightsideben.com, purchase products right off the website, brightsideben.com. You can also head over to my blog, pharmacistben.com, and my new blog, criticalhealthnews.com as well. Okay, thank you so much for joining us on the Bright Side. We're talking about the skin, and we're talking about skin exercise. Now, everyone probably listening to this program, everyone probably knows what exercise is. We talk about it all the time. But what is it really? Well, to exercise is not necessarily to lift weights or to run or do all the things that we think that promote or that stimulate the exercise process. Exercise really comes from the, uh, from the Latin word to destabilize, ex-arc, A-R-K, like Noah's Ark means stable and ex means not, not stable, exercise, ex-arc refers to shaking things up, somehow not allowing them to be still. Stillness equals death and stagnation equals disease. Stagnation, the slowing down of the bodily processes precede the stillness of the bodily processes. Stagnation is disease. St uh, stagnation leads to disease. And then ultimately, stillness equals death. Stagnation on the way to stillness, disease on the way to death. We need to reverse that process if we're going to be able to exploit health and wholeness and wellness. And that means destability. Stability is the enemy. Destability is exercise, but only one component of exercise. It's the recovery from the destability that's important, the re-stability. So you got destability, that's your exercise, and then you got rest. The rest phase is when the body or whatever the system you're dealing with restabilizes itself, and it's this combination of exercise and rest along with nourishment that allows us to leverage exercise, whether we're talking about exercising the, the muscles or the heart or, or the brain. The brain can be exercised. If you don't want to get Alzheimer's disease when you get older, or if you are older and you find you're losing some cognitive function, start to work with destabilizing your brain. Come up with new ideas. Read new books. Take a new a study, a different language. Go to a different culture. Have a different opinion. One of the things that happens when we get older, our brain becomes stable, and ultimately, our brain becomes still. That's what Alzheimer's and other dementias are. Learn a new language, read a new book, do something different. 
exercise the same way. There's something about exercise, and you guys who have uh, seen these commercials for P90X, P90X made a lot of money by doing something called, uh, well, I don't know what they called it actually, but they did different. Uh, they do different exercises on different days, so the system has to guess. The body has to guess. It can't predict, and it's this destability from guesswork where the body doesn't know what kind of exercise is coming next that prevents you from plateauing when you're doing your exercises. Sometimes people will go and work out and they'll exercise, but they'll sort of plateau. They won't get the same benefit that they got when they first started because their body gets used to the exercise. And in a sense, even though they're exercising, the body becomes stable. So keeping the body guessing is always helpful. Keeping the system guessing is always helpful if you want to leverage the power of exercise. So exercise is inherently destabilizing. The benefits come from the re-stabilizing, which occurs during the rest phase as the system is being nourished. And it's this combination of destability with rest and nourishment that allows us to benefit from exercise, whether we're talking exercising the muscles or the heart or the skin or the brain or even a civilization or a culture. Civilizations can be exercised. Cultures can be exercised by being stressed and then allowed to rest and uh, nourished, perhaps not in terms of nutrition, but emotionally nourished, mentally nourished with ideas. In essence, exercise is controlled stress, period. That's basically what you're looking at, and this is why people don't like it. This is why it's inherently unpleasant. But this stress is not distress. Distress is a negative type of stress. U stress, E-U. U stress is good stress as opposed to distress, and this, kind, this is the kind of stress that's associated with exercise, and it's the kind of stress that exploits the healthy body, uh, exploits the way the healthy body responds to trauma. The way the healthy body responds to trauma is through strength and through healing. The bone is always stronger at the point of the break. You exercise, you tear your muscles up, your muscles, or you lift weights, you do resistance training, you tear your muscles up, your muscles come back bigger and stronger and better. A scar, by the way, on the skin is an example of this phenomenon. Sometimes people want to get rid of scars. You see commercials for crazy products, fraudulent products, yes, fraudulent products that pretend to get rid of scars. You can't get rid of a scar because a scar is the way the body protects itself from an area that it perceives to be vulnerable. And a scar is like a, a strengthening of the area that's scarred in response to stress. It's a type of exercise, or at least the, the result of a type of exercise. So when it comes to exercise in the body, most of us associate exercise with, exercise with weight loss. So let's be clear here. There's a heck of a lot more to losing weight than exercising, as anybody can tell you who's exercised and only lost a pound or two. A lot of times people go to the gym, they'll get a membership for the gym, they'll do this treadmill workout and, and spinning and, and uh, martial arts or whatever it is, and they won't get the kind of weight loss that they want. You can, you can force your or, or compel your body to drop pounds by doing intense exercise, but for most of us, exercise, while it's definitely important, it's not a great weight loss strategy unless it's part of a well-rounded program that includes mental and emotional strategies, that includes nutritional supplementation, that includes dietary changes, eliminating food intolerances, and reducing sugar intake. One of the reasons why weight stays on us or body fat stays on us is because our body is protecting us. The inability to lose pound poundage is associated with some kind of burden on the system, some kind of emergency. It's a manifestation of the emergency response. If you're out there and you're trying to lose weight by simply going to the gym, I feel like most people, that's not a great way to lose weight. Exercise is overrated in this regard. I'm not saying it's not important now. It's very important, but you don't need a lot. Five minutes a day is plenty if you do it correctly. Yes, five minutes a day is plenty if you do it correctly. 15 minutes a day max if you do it correctly. If you do your exercise correctly, you're going to do it in quick bursts, intense bursts, not staying on the treadmill. I, I go to the gym, I see people staying on the treadmill for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. That's not a great exercise. Try staying on the treadmill for two minutes, but running fast, sprinting or put the incline up and sprint, do an incline sprint. See if you could do that for 20 minutes. If you can get on the treadmill for 20 minutes, you're not burdening the body enough. A walk around the block is not exercise, as important as it is and as helpful as it can be. Walking is definitely helpful. You're moving your muscles and you're moving your circulation. You're improving your lymphatic, the, the movement of lymphatic fluids throughout the body. I'm not saying it's not valuable, but it's not going to necessarily build you muscle or cause you to lose weight or induce weight loss. So exercise is overrated, and most people don't even know how to exercise. You want to exercise fast and quick and sharp and acutely. You want a burst of exercise followed by long, luscious rest. And you know what? It has a lot to do with the skin, too. There's a lot you can do in terms of skin exercise. I'll tell you what I mean 
when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday. 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. If you miss a program, they're all archived at brightsideben.com. Got years of archives, probably going on six years now, five or six years of archives. Brightsideben.com. You can also check out my blogs, pharmacistben.com and uh, criticalhealthnews.com. We update them regularly with news, news stories as well as blog posts. Thank you to Robert Lundgren as well as John T. Collier for setting those up for us. And if you want to purchase Longevity products, you can do them right off the website. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you'd like to join the Brightside Ben team and make some money selling Longevity products, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, serve your fellow man using nutritional supplements, and earn a living doing or earn some money, make a living doing it. You can call the Brightside Ben phone team. They can tell you all about it for a one-time $25 fee. 866-735-2470 is their number. Okay, hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you in just a minute. Our number is 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health or nutrition or skin care, skin care products, acne, got a really neat, fa- uh, if you, uh, you're friends with me on my Facebook page, check out my Facebook page. Got a really cool picture of some young man uh, who had really severe acne. Uh, just gave him a couple nutritional strategies and told him about some supplements. And, and his mom is uh, is uh, is putting his pictures up on my Facebook page, how his skin is progressing. And it's really quite amazing. So if you uh, haven't friended me on Facebook, check out my Facebook page. Or let's say you got the Truth With Ben Facebook page or just Ben Fuchs. Anyway, we're talking skin, skin exercise. Uh, most of us associate exercise, we think about it with weight loss, but weight loss is not necessarily... Uh, exercise is not necessarily the only thing you need to do for weight loss, or as important as exercise is. What's more, more is not always better when it comes to exercise. In fact, more can sometimes be counterproductive if we don't know what we're doing. To truly get the benefits of exercise, whether we're talking about exercising your skin, and we'll be talking about that here in a little bit, or exercising the body, all you need is a few minutes a day. It doesn't take long. You know, you could really get a good good uh, exercise workout in 30 seconds or 60 seconds if you do it correctly. Certainly, you only need 5 or 10 minutes max, 15 minutes at the ultimate max if you want to do it correctly. And it's the rest that follows the exercise that's even more important or at least as important as the exercise itself because that's when the growth occurs. I call it extra rest to show that it's exercise and rest, stimulation followed by rest that is the key. And also... The more you exercise, the more you got to nutriate. The more stress or destability or exercise the body has, the more important it is to to nutriate the body, to nourish the body. If you're going to leverage the stimulation and minimize the damage, to exploit or take advantage of the stimulatory properties of exercise and mitigate, minimize the the damage that the stimulation can potentially induce. Exercise is a, is a burden on the body, which is good, but the body has to be simultaneously rested, not simultaneously, but after the stress occurs, it has to be rested and it has to be nourished. So stress is your friend. Stress is a good thing, and this is the distinction between distress and eustress. Exercise is inherently stressful, but it's a good type of stress as long as it's followed by rest and nutrition and nourishment, whether we're talking body as a whole or today we're talking about the skin. Exercise is destabilizing. It's the restabilizing where the growth occurs. The body's response to this destability, the body's response to having its stability thrown off is to become more complex. Physicists study this phenomenon. It's called complexity theory, and it's something we've only really known about from a physics standpoint for the last maybe 50 or 60 years, very recently. Complexity theory is what it's called, and it's the idea that systems, whether it's the body, the muscles, the heart, the brain, the the skin, or a civilization, or, uh, or a colony of bacteria, whatever it is, these systems become more complex when they are destabilized. Complexity theory posits this, says this. Systems like to be stable, they become destabilized. As, as they become destabilized, they build up energy. Finally, that energy restabilizes itself at a higher level of complexity. That's physics and hardcore physics. Rebecca Costa has written a book called 
uh, The Watchman's Rattle, where she talks about this phenomena occurring with civilizations and with societies. Really cool book. She applies complexity theory, the same thing we're talking about here in terms of exercise in the skin, to how societies move, to how ideas take shape. Think about it. When, when there's a weird idea or a strange idea in the culture, it's kind of like destabilizes the culture. Culture can't handle it. So first the culture laughs at the idea, then it tries to resist the idea. Those represent the stress phase. And then finally the culture assimilates the idea at a higher level of complexity. If it's a good idea, the system will take it in and the system becomes better. It's kind of like exercising the system, exercising the, the culture, the society. This is what Rebecca Costa talks about if you're interested in reading the book. It's called The Watchman's Rattle and it's a super cool book. It's this back and forth nature between stability and instability that keeps us in the growth mode. That's what exercise is about. The body is always doing this. It's, it's going back and forth from, from destability to restability. And that's a good thing. As long as rest and nourishment occur, this is how the body grows. Anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism means breakdown. Catab I'm sorry, anabolism means build up. Catabolism means breakdown. And it's this build up, breakdown, build up, breakdown, build up, breakdown, back and forth, back and forth, which is where the body builds itself up, which is where the body gets stronger by breaking down, building up, breaking down, building up. They're always occurring. Both of them are always occurring. And to know how to leverage them, to understand how to leverage them is the key to getting stronger, whether you're leveraging them with weights at the gym or whether you're leveraging them with skincare ingredients that you're putting right on top of the skin to make the skin bigger and stronger and better. And there's wonderful topical ingredients that you can put right on your skin that will exercise the skin the way weights exercise your muscles. I'll tell you what those are tomorrow as we continue talking skin health and anti-aging skin care on the bright side. All right, time to hit our phones, 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. Let's move to, uh, let's go to Florida and welcome Angela to the bright side. What's up, Angela? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks, Thomas, has been. My question is around a uh, appointment I had with my doctor. I tested a little bit higher than normal for my bilirubin. And okay. my amylase and lipase, and I really oh. wanted to talk about my dark circles. And you mentioned how it's tied to the blood. So it's I was all connected. If there's a connection with yes. kind of my results, or okay. Yes, yes, yes. You got to find out where your problem is. You got you got some stuff going on there. Bilirubin is a, a substance that's made in the liver. Uh, I'm not sure how the amylase and lipase fits in there, but th those involve the pancreas. Uh, chances sounds to like a digestive issue. The dark circles under the eye are very interesting. They're not skin problems. They're not eye problems. You can't put something on top of your skin to change the dark circles. What you're seeing with the dark circles under the eye is leaky blood. You're seeing the blood pigments leaking out of the very tiny vessels under the, uh, under the skin and the eye because the skin there is so thin, it's like a window into your circulatory system. So here's the deal, and I'm glad you asked this question because it's very, very important, Angela. It seems like you have a skin problem, but you don't. You have a circulatory problem. And this is really the only problem anybody ever has. All health challenges are blood health challenges. You know, on this program, we always say all disease is cell disease. That's like our mantra. But all cell disease is blood disease. So you're dealing like anybody else who has a health challenge. And by the way, dis-ease doesn't mean necessarily cancer or heart disease. It means a body that's out of ease, that's in dis-ease, distress, if you will. And all disease, all bodies out of ease all, uh, begin, begin the dis-ease process in the blood. And seeing things underneath the eyes is a classic case of a circulatory system problem. So hang tight, Angela. I'm going to tell you how to address this when we come back, okay? Thanks for your call. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Physician who gave unneeded chemo gets 45 years in prison. Farid Fada, the oncologist who got rich administering excessive or unnecessary chemo to hundreds of patients, including some who didn't have cancer, was sentenced to 45 years. Now, that's obviously horrific, but and it's not. this is not an indictment against all doctors, but it is an indictment against not paying attention to what the doctor's doing to us. It's so important, you guys, that if you're going to the doctor, you're getting prescriptions at the pharmacy, that you ask questions and that you understand your medicine and that you understand why you're taking your medicine and that you understand what the doctor's doing and you understand your bodies. And that's why we are here every day to help folks understand the body, 
not to rip on doctors, not to rip on drugs, but to understand the medical model, to understand pharmacology, to understand our bodies. How can we be expected to make good decisions about our health or about what medicines to take or not take, what pet medicines to avoid or what doctors to see if we don't understand our bodies? And that's why we're here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the confusion around our bodies, around the medical model, around doctoring, and around prescription drugs. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Angela. Where is Angela? You there, Angela? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so would you, would you want to look at your dark circles, and this is for everybody out there who has dark circles, not as a skin problem, but as a circulation problem. The blood's not moving correctly. This is a very common thing. As I said, all disease behind it has some kind of dirty blood issue. When the blood becomes dirty and when the uh, body becomes, uh, goes into survival mode or stress mode, the circulation will become impaired. So number one, you gotta clean the blood. That's first thing. The Billy Rubin issue tells me that you got a liver problem and that can be significant. So you must have some other health issues going on, Angela. And that's good news because those can be like those can be diagnostic tools for you. When those other health issues improve, you're, no, you're going to know you're on the right track. Especially look for digestive issues because that's how the blood becomes dirty in the first place. And as I said, the bilirubin issue uh, tells me that the, you have a bile problem or a liver problem, and that's a digestive condition too. So you got to look for food allergies, Angela. Okay, food intolerances, and then the, uh, the best way to do that, of course, is with a food diary. We write everything down that you eat, and then how you feel after, and then start eliminating those foods. A food diary is nothing more than writing down the foods you eat, trying to eat as simply as possible, so you know what's doing what. So you're eating, uh, instead of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, just having peanuts, or instead of chicken fricassee, you just have a little piece of chicken breast. You get the idea here, just small, uh, uh, non-complicated food, so you can assess what's doing what with a cause and effect relationship between foods and, and what's happening in your body. If you do a fast, that can help for a couple of reasons. Number one, it will reduce the stream of toxicity into the body, and it will also resensitize your body so you'll notice your digestive symptoms more readily. Sometimes our digestive systems become invisible to us or transparent to us when they occur over and over again. By fasting, you'll resensitize yourself to your symptomology. So taking a couple of days off from food, maybe doing a Swero V cleanse, get some of uh, the Beyond Organic Swero V from your Longevity uh, rep or off the website. Uh, that can help too. Uh, the Swero V is unbelievable for fasting. Celery juice can help you fast. There's lots of ways to, to uh, make it easy to start a fast. Uh, one or two days is all you need and then hit the reset button. And you want to start doing things for the circulatory system. They starts with digestive health. Digestive enzymes can help you uh, in terms of circulation and in terms of food. Love the ultimate enzymes for that reason. They got two benefits or they got a lot of benefits but two of the benefits are they clean the blood help smooth the, the transport or the movement of blood through the circulatory system and they'll also help you digest your food. Take three after meals and then take some in between meals and do some apple cider vinegar with your, with your digestive enzymes. Probiotics help good bacteria. I like the Biolumin Nightly Essence. Of course, fermented food is also a good source of good bacteria. And if you do your celery juice, not only will it help you fast, but the fiber in the celery juice is also very important for the digestive system. You know, you notice here we're talking digestion. Uh, surprise, surprise. We're not talking about the eye specifically. I want to make it clear, though, this is not an eye issue. This is not a skin issue. This is a circulatory issue. Does that make sense, by the way, Angela? Am I making sense so far? Yes. Angela? Okay, good. Blood sugar is also very important. Sugar represents a toxin to the blood. That's, there's a lot of problems with sugar, but one of the main ones is it represents a toxin to the body and to the blood after you have a certain amount. So keeping your sugar intake down is also very important. Of course, the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients will help you do that, and then the Sweeties will help you as well. A couple miscellaneous nutrients for the blood supply. Vitamin E can be helpful, 400 international units a day. Uh, chances are you've got a vitamin A problem. If you have a liver issue, you might want to throw in 10 or 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day. And then as an all-around liver and digestive supplement and also blood and circulatory supplement, the Fucoid Z. Two miscellaneous non-supplemental strategies that can be helpful for you. Moving that lymph and blood around with a rebounder. Jumping up on a rebounder one or two minutes a day or even just doing a super fast walk. I said earlier how walking is not a great exercise, but walking fast is a great exercise, a super fast walk for maybe two minutes a day, uh, every other day, three or four days a week, or go up the stairs really fast, not running, but walking fast up the stairs. Something interesting happens when we walk fast that's different from running. It's actually a lot harder in a way to walk really fast than it is to run. You use a different group of muscles. So walking up the stairs fast, not running up the stairs, but walking fast, that can also help improve 
improve your circulation. Anything you do to improve the circulatory system is going to help you. And then, of course, my favorite way to improve the circulatory system, improve the movement of blood through the circulatory system, is practicing your deep breathing techniques, not only for oxygen, hypoxia, low blood oxygen, can clot the blood or clog up the blood, but uh, deep breathing is also important because the muscles in the lungs can help move the circulatory and lymphatic fluids, the intercostal muscles, those are your lung muscles. By practicing deep breathing, you can move those fluids around the blood and the lymph as well. Got to move on, Angela. I hope that helps. Thank you so much Thank for your you. call. Appreciate it. Take care. God bless you. All right. Matt in Ohio. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Hi, Ben. Uh, hey. I'm a huge fan. Thank you. I appreciate it. For over two years. Love your show. I'm addicted. Every good deal. Every day I have the show on when I'm cooking dinner. Oh, good. Uh, You're, that's you, a good addiction. You, I like that. Thank you for sharing yeah, Very that. good. Um, you've helped me a lot. I've taken a lot of your, your advice. It's really brought everything together. Um, as far as uh, cutting out, basically uh, following a ketogenic diet, just just phenomenal. Right. Taking awesome. the uh, the supplements, um, sipping on the uh, on the uh, longevity Be- supplements, um, OsteoFX. What my call, what I'm calling about is um, specifically cortisol. I'm okay. trying to raise my cortisol level. I haven't found any information. Um, and any searches and how to do this. Okay, that's great. That's a great question because you always hear the opposite, how cortisol is a problem. But actually, without cortisol, you can't handle stress. And interestingly, cortisol gives you kind of a a sense of euphoria, a sense of a, a, a high kind of. And you can get prescription cortisol. And they will give you prescription cortisol if they see you have low cortisol. And by the way, low cortisol follows something called adrenal fatigue, which I know folks have heard of. What happens is when we're under a lot of stress, we get a surge of cortisol. Cortisol is our stress hormone. And then over time, we run out of cortisol. And then your body has to, has to recover, and you've got to build up more cortisol. So you're in that stage probably, if you're talking about you or whoever it is, where your adrenal glands are just they've, they've run out of cortisol. Now they've got to make more, and you've got to help them make more. Is, that, is it right. for you or somebody else? It's for me. The reason okay. why I'd like to raise the cortisol is because uh, over the last 13 years, I've been on uh, Paxil. 20 milligrams, and okay. just about six months ago, I, I completely went off just following all your all your suggestions. Fasting has been, been a huge help, but what's happening now is um, I find that um, I'm waking up in the middle of the night. I think it's low blood sugar, sweating. Yep, heart, that could heart, all be low. That could all, that's, that's exactly what that is, and by the way, that's cortisol doing that. Hang tight. we got to take a break, Matt, but I'll address your question when we come back. It's a good question. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. We're talking to Matt in Ohio about cortisol. You there, Matt? I'm here. Okay, so building your cortisol, that's going to be what you want to do here. It sounds like uh, when you get a surge of cortisol in the middle of the night or over the course of time, you might be running low on cortisol. That's called adrenal fatigue. It's very common. By the way, there's a really cool book by Dr. James Wilson called Adrenal Fatigue. I have it. Oh, it's an awesome book. Good deal. It's great, yeah. Uh, okay, good. Uh, I got another book here somewhere about adrenal fatigue. I'll get that to you here. Uh, probably tomorrow we'll talk about that if I remember anyway. Okay, so here's the deal with the adrenal glands. Uh, before you go to bed, that surge that you're experiencing where you, where you wake up in the middle of the night and you get up and you can't go back to sleep, I take it, that's very common. That's a surge of cortisol, actually, and it's usually, as you said correctly, it follows low blood sugar. So what you want to do is have a little bit of protein before you go to bed. Now, protein, uh, if you take sugar or do sh- uh, carbohydrates before you go to bed, that might keep you up. But a little bit of protein will have a stabilizing effect. Uh, and your body can utilize it for sugar. So a small amount of whey protein, maybe, that will help. You might also want to try a little bit of lecithin or uh, something yeah. before you go to bed. Not before I go to bed. Mass try try a little bit before you go to bed. You can also get something called phosphatidylserine, which is a fancy, fancy version of lecithin, PTS they call it. One of those things before you go to bed. Sometimes that helps as well. And then as far as the adrenal glands and cortisol goes, relaxing the body is the most important strategy, Matt. When, the, uh, when your body feels like its survival is at stake, it's going to crank out all the adrenal hormones. And not only are you going to uh, be dealing with adrenal fatigue, and not only are you going to be dealing with low cortisol, but now you're going to be dealing with low 
youth and vitality and repair hormones as well. Because the more your body's pumping out cortisol, the less it's able to make testosterone and estrogen and other fertility and youth and and, um, and vir virility hormones. So you want to make sure that your adrenal glands are strong and there's lots of ways to do it. Restricting your intake of sugar is very, very important. Redu uh, making sure you're breathing correctly. Practicing slow, deep breathing is very important. Both of those I will tell started. the body. Good deal. That'll make a huge difference for you. If you have any food problems, you need to correct those. Uh, now, you mentioned earlier that you were on Paxil. And that tells me you might have a serotonin problem. Here's the thing about serotonin. In order to make serotonin, you need to have carbohydrates. And you need to have some insulin. So you can't That's go... That's my problem. You're going ketogenic and you're probably not... Right. Right? So here's what you right. need to do. Here's what you need to do. You need carbs, but it has to be slow, slow digesting carbs, complex carbs from vegetables. And you want to mix your carbs with some amino acids, especially a tryptophan, which helps you make serotonin. And the combination of tryptophan or tryptophan containing foods like eggs and, and meat, if you're a meat eater, and dairy also are good tryptophan proteins. The combination with these tryptophan proteins plus your carbohydrates from vegetables will help your body make serotonin. Many of us self-medicate when it comes to raising serotonin with carbs, but the wrong kinds of carbs. And it's, there's a very good chance if you're out there and you're listening and you're uh, addicted to sugar and you're addicted to carbs, the chances are very good you're trying to make serotonin. This is why we can't, one of the reasons why we can't get off of sugar. So by using vegetables as your source of carbohydrate, in addition to protein, to get your tryptophan, that'll help your body make its own serotonin. So the ketogenic diet's great, but you may not be getting the carbs from vegetables that you need. Uh, if you don't want, to, if you want to make sure that you're getting protein or tryptophan in your protein and you don't want to deal with eating a bunch of eggs or a bunch of meat, you can get something called 5-HTP to take with your vegetables. Uh, that's a, a precursor to serotonin, or you can use straight a tryptophan. Then there's the adrenal support, and there's lots of nutrients for the adrenal glands. Vitamin C is probably the most important vitamin for the adrenal glands, uh, and then uh, zinc is probably the most important mineral for the adrenal glands. You'll get vitamin C in the Beyond Tangy. You might want to throw in some more vitamin C throughout the day. Always do your I vitamin do, C yep. th throughout the day. Very good. And then zinc, 50 milligrams a day. That's the most important mineral for the adrenal glands. Some other vitamins that are important for adrenal health, vitamin A, 20,000 IU a day, 10 to 20,000 IU a day, and then uh, also the entire B complex, but especially vitamin B12 is important for the adrenals, and then in addition to zinc, magnesium is another important mineral as well as iodine for adrenal functioning. So you're going to focus on adrenal functioning, lower your sugar, make sure you're making serotonin, and then uh, practice all the relaxation strategies that we always talk about significantly, most significantly, is of course slow, deep breathing, especially when you get up in the middle of the night and you can't go back to sleep. One of the greatest ways to, to go back to sleep is to watch your breathing. In fact, watching any of your body, uh, body sounds or body processes will drop you into what's called alpha brainwave state and activate the relaxation nervous system. Just watching or, or paying attention to, I should say, your heartbeat or your, the rhythm of your breath. The, I like the rhythm of the breath. That is really relaxing. What happens is you go into this alpha state. Remember in the old days they would hold a watch or the, the stereotype of the, the uh, hypno, hypnotist would hold the watch and the watch would go left and right and left and right. And he'd say, you are getting sleepy. And that's, that's kind of the stereotype of hypnosis. But what was really happening is when there's a rhythm, a steady, slow rhythm, our brain and trains or lines up with that rhythm and we go into a hypnotic state, a relaxed a relaxing state, a brain scientist call it the alpha brainwave state, but you can do it by, you don't need a watch and a hypno, hypnotist to do it, you can do it just by watching your breathing or paying attention to your heart rate or any sounds in the body or really any sounds, even sounds in the environment will drop you into alpha state if you pay attention. It's the paying attention that drops you into this hypnotic state and that can be uh, very calming and very soothing and help you uh, re help your adrenal glands regenerate if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue or low cortisol. Lots of stuff there. I appreciate your call, Matt. Anything else you got? Well, just real quick, the zinc, the colonate, uh, I noticed as soon as I took it, my at, my uh, dandruff went right away with along with the vitamin A, 20,000. How do you like that? National unit. How do you amazing. like that, Matt? Did your dermatologist tell you about that? Anybody tell you about that? Of course not. No, specialists. Uh, no, the specialties not, are for specialists. Really. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. All right. Thank you for your Thanks, call. Appreciate man. it, Matt. All right. Have a beautiful day in Ohio. Coach Cosmo, welcome to the Bright Side, man. What's up? Brother Ben, how are you? I'm doing good. Hey, give your website out real quick. All righty. Uh, you can find me on YouTube. You can go to YouTube.com slash Coach Cosmo. That's Coach C-O-S-M-O. Coach C-O-S-M-O. And then 
www.coachcosmocares.com. Ben, quick Good question deal. about lactation. You're not lactating, lactating are you, not, Coach Cosmo? I, I, thank goodness, no. <laughs> I'm just thank kidding. Thank goodness, no. It's someone else who would like to be. She's got a baby, but she's not producing enough milk. What can okay. I tell her? Uh, well, you know, it's the same thing. Same old, same old. Is she smoking by any chance? You said again? Is she a smoker? Um, not that I'm aware. That's the biggest reason why people will have a problem lactating. But basically, it's a sign of the stress response if you're not lactating. So you've got to calm the body down. Relax the body. Now, if the body's under any kind of burden, stressful burden from a disease state or an illness or a lack of nutrition, those all need to be addressed, especially with fats. Omega-3 fats, um, especially uh, omega-3 fats, but all your essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs, focus on fats uh, as far as nutritional supplements go. But you really got to look for any other health issues because that's a sign that the body is under some kind of burden. So what you want to do is you want to see if there's some blood sugar problem. That's usually a burden that's going on uh, or a digestive issue. That could be happening too. So look for other symptoms aside from the lack of lactation. If there's emotional, mental stresses, clearly those need to be addressed as well. But look for other uh, other, di- uh, other bodily, body issues, other health issues. If there is... Uh, if there's any, uh, any kind of uh, autoimmune problems or any, any health problem, really, that can represent a burden on the body, and the body won't make milk. Smokers or cigarette smoking is really the worst problem, and prescription drugs can do it, too. If she's on any prescription drugs, you want to have her, uh, you want to make sure that she's uh, at least weaning herself off her prescription drugs. If she's on prescription drugs or anybody who's lactating on prescription drugs, by the way, baby is getting medicated as well as you. So that's not a good idea. So what you want to do is look for other health issues, especially around relaxation. There are foods that can have a positive effect on... uh, on uh, uh, lactation, on increasing milk, especially vitamin C containing foods, uh, or she can just do straight vitamin C. Uh, there's an herb called fenugreek. I don't know if you ever heard of that. That's been used uh, oh, sure. in Ayurvedic medicine. Fenugreek is like the next up and coming herb for the hormone system. That's uh, spelled F E N U G R E E K, not only for the hormone system, but also for uh, the blood sugar system. So, fenugreek is a great building. Uh, building herb. You can do fenugreek tinctures, or you can, there's, fen, there's various forms of fenugreek that you could find at a health food store. Dandelion, fennel, those are herbs that are all associated with improving lactation. And of course, a good nutritional supplement program featuring protein, especially whey protein. Uh, the combination yeah, I was going to ask you about that. It's awesome. I think she may be leading a vegetarian lifestyle. Well, well that, so. that would definitely put a burden on the body, especially if she, you know, a lot of times people have a vegetarian diet and they don't realize that vegetables can be more reactive than meat. In fact, there's no toxic meat. Nobody's allergic to any meat, but we're allergic and there's plenty of toxic vegetables. So vegetarians have to be really careful. Uh, sometimes they, you know, especially if they consider, oh, vegetables are benign, I can eat whatever I want. Uh, that's, sometimes that's not the case. Coach Cosmo, that's all the time we have. Thanks for your call, buddy. I hope I helped you. Thank you. Take care, man. Have a beautiful day. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products you heard us advertise or recommend today, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to my website, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome, spectacular, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.